approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. So moved. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Approval of the monthly claims. Bill's on that. I looked at them. <coughs> Alcohol beverages license. Will we approve? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Four. The auditors were here all last week, and he had these. Um, this one more, right? The problem risk. Um, I think he has you guys fill them out every year. The fraud risk inquiry. Yeah, Is that in our packet? It's in your packet. Do you, want to, do you want us to fill them out and turn them into you then? Or? Yes. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be today. You guys can yeah. just give it me maybe this week sometime, and I'll scan an email to him. Yeah. And then back up to number two. There was, so it's the regular claim list, but on there was the, the dump fire, fire suppression claim from IDL. Yeah, yeah. So that, what did they say? Well, the only thing I told them is that it would be up for review today during a regular meeting for claims. And that's the only communication side. So they're giving us a bill for total suppression costs of <coughs> $2,493.66. And you call it a nuisance fire. Yeah. It was a nuisance fire? That That's what they're fighting. The Department of Lands respond to a fire burning out of control. Uh, provides that code 38 107 provides that any force or range fire burning out of control is a public nuisance. The fire warden and gives the fire, fire warden authority to abate the nuisance. In addition, the state statute allows Idaho Department of Lands to collect fire suppression costs from the person responsible for the nuisance fire. Well, it wasn't a uh, um, force or range fire. It was a controlled fire at our, uh, at our transfer station. And uh, I think we need more, some more information on that, maybe from the city fire department, because I heard that they were there with their truck also. I was there also. Okay. And St. Mary's City did respond with their big bumper. And uh, when I left, they virtually, uh, the IDL just got there and St. Mary's Fire virtually had it out. So, so the, this the IDL did, actually did nothing? Well, I can't say that. Uh, I'm sure they ran some hose around the perimeter. Uh, but So the, where was it out of control at? I, I, that well, it was on the, it'd be the south end of the building out where the uh, drops over the drops hill. over and it was coming up over the, the bank. And uh, I don't remember now, and uh, uh, I can't think of the worker out there. Um, yeah. Richard Robinson. Richard, thank you. Uh, he said that uh, uh, it got started and uh, he tried to put it out and didn't. That's when he called us and that's when we responded. So, like I said, Larry Nacarado. Uh, was there also? He had that pumper and uh, he shot water out there 150, 200 feet. So I was very impressed. And so, like I said, when I left, it was, it was virtually done. Well, you know, that was it was this a scrap pile? I'd seen. No, nobody said a word to me. Now, that I don't know, Jack. Uh, like I said, when I got there, it was already burning, and Richard was out there with a uh, 
uh, one of the, the uh, piece of equipment uh, pushing stuff around and so on and so forth. So, but it, what was that the strap, the strap pile is? To the, the south. Wood, that was it at the wood pile? Is that what? <laughs> it was 817, that's August 17th. You wouldn't be burning on, on that day, would he? Well, I, you know, he you, he clears that with us when he does that burning. Yeah. So I, I mean, that's what's totally, did somebody set it on fire or what? Or something. No, well, we we watch that, and we never let it get real big, you know. Look, to be a nuisance fire, though, and us responsible for it, we'd have to set it, wouldn't we? Mm -hmm. well, I don't think. Uh, well, I know. I I I I'm baffled on. It. I really am because I don't. Uh, something's fishy because they would they would have talked to us about it and they didn't they didn't talk to us so yeah. tell them to take it off the sixty five thousand bucks tax revenue loss yeah that you got that they never sent anything then in the letter of their time or anything no. Yeah, it just gives us a bill for you know, twenty five hundred bucks. Due in this office by February tenth, two thousand nineteen. And that's why I emailed them and said it wouldn't make it by the tenth because we'd be reviewing it today. Well, that's not a good deal. Being very uh, well, and it puts a precedence on things like that too. Well, you know they need to, they're supposed to work with they work with us on roads and everything else. I don't know what happened there. You don't know. Dick might have said it. We don't have any idea. You know, I and I I just don't believe he said it that time of year though. Free time here, maybe give him a call, talk to him. Yeah. You got his phone number? I have the dump phone number. Yeah. Um, I, I don't have his cell if he's got one. Call him on the dump number. Okay. Message, could you call me back on 245 2234? Don't go to education, though, because they ain't going to do anything. They ain't going to, they ain't going to cut the, 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 the 20, uh, the, they're going to log it for four years or five years. Well, I just we won't get anything out of it. That is what I told them. It's a problem dealing with the county supply line at the end. And uh, they got to think about this on the way back. And actually, like St. Mary's School District, they, get, they really get burned. And if they want to get another, 20, 30,000 acres up, uh, up there were up your way of all, too. All of a sudden, your, your school district's putting in no, uh, no tax base. So it's just pretty, pretty ridiculous. Yeah. But you know, they did, they, went, they did not, they not, they didn't talk to the county. No, 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 no they didn't talk to They didn't state. talk to the county. Well, this so. is county anyway. They talked to, uh, uh, Shoshone, not Shoshone, but, uh, Boundary of Bonner County, all those guys, he said they discussed it with them, but our, our local yokels down here did not. Well, and they kind of used an excuse, which if they were going to cut that stuff right away and bring the revenue back to the schools and stuff, then we'd have a hard time arguing that, but we, yeah. that isn't what they're doing and going to do. No. So that's where we're, 
where we got the problem. Well, I went down and talked to them, and they said that though there wasn't much timber on the ground that they bought from Opus, there were going to increase or cut on the timber that they had now that they had this other ground. How would you do that if the, what they're doing is balancing forest management, and it's all cut off? So that you know that's not well, a. It didn't, it didn't make sense to that me. Don't, but that don't make a good. That's what they told me they were going to do. They're going to increase cut on the ground because they had too much of an old stand. But they could balance it out with this ground that was already cut. I might have to myself, it didn't make sense, but that was the way they explained it to me down at the office. Well, so we're not done with the model, I'll tell you that. I talked to that uh, senator from Lake <coughs> He didn't seem like it was, he, he was clueless that it was an issue for us. He wouldn't be. Yeah. Yeah, he wouldn't be. Senator uh, Representative Troy's on top of it. Uh, the Speaker, Scott Bedeke, he understands, but I don't think he wants to do anything. And that guy, Purple Dink from Ada County, yeah. he didn't know what time he was even talking about. He brought him off for about two minutes. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the government also were discussed with IDL. Yeah, we'll. Are we at on five now, Pete? Yes. What is that? So during the during the audit when he was here last week, <clears throat> he wanted to review uh, the information with the hospital, and when he reviewed the resolution that we put. Um, for the $475,000, he noticed that it expired on September 30th, 2018, and they've still got um, an uncashed check in their possession. Uh, so his thought was we either need to redo the resolution with a new ending date or, you know, or, or fulfill the parameters of the resolution and cut that off as of 930. So, so commissioners, I, I need to address uh, the board on this because I've received a communication he, we're talking about Tony Matson, who is one of the auditors from our um, Hayden Ross County Auditing Company, and he has asked me some questions about the repayment agreement. This is an email to me, and um, you have a copy. And I actually um, responded and said I would not be able to answer his questions about, you know, the repayment agreement or the hospital's obligations until, A, you have an opportunity to look at it and you really need to read his, his email. And B, you need to go back to the hospital board. The current loan check that has been issued has never been cashed. And I confirmed that with DD Friday. And um, it's also expired, like as of February 4th. <clears throat> Our intention when we did the loan resolution was that at the end of each of your fiscal years, your fiscal year ends September 30th, that there would be resolution or repayment. And since the check has never been cashed, the money has never actually been borrowed. We need to go back to the hospital board. They're the ones that would need to initiate a new request. I do have a resolution prepared if, if that's what they want to do. But right now it's a moot point because the check is expired and the yeah, board the hospital board needs to take some action the, I think in my opinion we need to set on that when they need that if they need it then we will do something them taking a check and setting on it in it not doing anything with it uh, unless they have something that that we're missing there uh, you know when we issued that loan to them, it was if they absolutely needed it because they're just right out of here while they're having severe cash flow problems. And we, were, we issued that so they would uh, be able to make uh, make the uh, bills. Yeah, and, 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 and they come in yeah. and they got the, the, some money come in and they, they but you know. We, we can send them a letter and if they want us to reissue it then let them make the decision. 
Yeah, my recommendation is that at least as far as this has been put on the agenda as an action item, that it be tabled and or taken off the agenda until such time as you receive a request from the yeah. hospital board to reopen yeah, this question. There's... Just take it off the agenda for now. And then I think the check should be returned. I think the our DDS or county auditor needs to retrieve that because that will clear your books. I mean, the audit, our county yeah. auditors are trying to clear the books. And the hospital auditors and the county auditors are in communication with each other. And okay. we just need to retrieve the check. And okay. Anybody opposed to that? Okay. <coughs> Building issues? Okay. Oh, I, okay. <laughs> yeah. This is a source of it. Here, uh, approximately a week ago, if I remember correctly, DD, uh, we had water uh, in the uh, clerk's office again uh, from the ceilings. Uh, Quite a bit of water, as a matter of fact, uh, and, and it went down into the vault area. Uh, Where did we, the water come from? Well, we think it came from the middle cell. So I got a hold of the plumber, uh, the prosecutor, and a, all of us people. We started looking. Uh, Nick is at a loss of what is going on. We pulled the inmates out of the middle cell and put them over into the max cell. Uh, the reason we did that is we tore apart that one raceway alongside of the shower and we found that the drain from the roof was running down on the outside of the pipe. So we thought, okay, that must be be what's causing it. So we moved the people over, we tore that uh, uh, completely apart, uh, and everything else. They go up look on the roof. They did, and it does need to be cleaned, uh, and uh, I think uh, maintenance <coughs> knows about it. Was that. last time. Yeah. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, we got the, the freezing weather, so everything kind of calmed down. But when we moved the people from the middle cell into the max cell, that night uh, we got a call from uh, uh, maintenance and in the clerk's office under or yeah, over one of the other ladies' desk, the <coughs> fixtures were full of water. I mean, uh, my uh, lieutenant said that there was over a gallon of water in those two fixtures. So, and I know I know you've been up there, and I, I think you two have Phil also the the max cell and you know, our cell blocks. Only as a visitor. <laughs> I I won't go that far. <laughs> but there's no correlation between where the middle cell is and where the max cell is, with the exception, and I know Didi's uh, thought of this, uh, Stacy thought of this, I saw this, the only exception is we moved the inmates from one cell block to the other. So I got to looking in there again, the, the plumber, I, we tried to call the plumber, he, he won't even come out. So uh, that morning, the judge and I went upstairs into the uh, max cell, and we found that under the toilets, on um, one of them, there's a gap about this far. And the judge, because he's small enough, he was able to get down on the floor. He says, there's a hole in the, the concrete uh, with, with no flange or anything over it. That's where the water's coming from. Well, 
the next day, I pulled the inmates back out of the max cell where I could get in there and get down and see there, there's no hole in the floor. So, and the only thing that I know of that uh, it affects both cell blocks are the two showers. Because looking at the way the showers were built here uh, about 20 years ago, uh, to me they were not built right. But I think with, we're going to have to take water, and I think what's happening, being that we do have that commonality now with the showers in both of them, is somebody is putting a towel or whatever over the shower uh, outlet, and the water, it raises the water up, and with the way these showers are built, if it gets up high enough, you can go right up over the top and flood. But the only way that we're going to be able to find out for sure is to physically do it. The other thing is uh, uh, on that shower in the uh, middle cell, it's not a full height shower. It doesn't go up to the ceiling. And behind the shower stall, there's a gap between the shower stall and the wall about two inches to where they can just throw stuff over the back side. I would like to have uh, a, uh, a cap made to fit on that to, to stop that totally. And I do know that uh, the Nick, the plumber, he's, he's at his wits end. So, uh, so if, if I pass this the second floor and it comes down on the this thing, is down here in the auditor's office. Hi. Hey, no, you know no, the, this we're, we're talking uh, about the, the uh, court clerk's office on the second floor. Yeah, on the second. Oh, okay, that clerk. Okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. So I would welcome. Uh, oh, Richard Roberts. How did that fire start up there? The fire that they come up and put out. That's yeah, <laughs> and it was over the bank then, huh? <coughs> Thousand bill from the Department of Lands for coming up there. So, uh, hmm. <coughs> well, Fire chief, I don't know. 
Oh, I, but I we never know. littered. Pardon? We never, we never, no. never no. littered. I didn't think we did, but I didn't know for sure. But I do know that uh, Larry Nakarada was there with their big pumper and a couple of uh, firemen. And uh, when I left, they had it virtually out. Now, IDL they had just gotten there, and that's when I had to go on another call. So whether they ran hoses or what, I had no idea. So, so what was the cause of the fire then? Well, she said that he put in old stuff, but apparently it was still burning down over the bank there. And he said it was. And uh, I didn't think he did canoe burn that time of year. No. Yeah. So. Well, where did the old stuff come from? It must have been from the fire before. You know how you know how they do. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. taken. <laughs> However, <laughs> we, we did not intentionally start the fire, did we? We didn't. And, uh, we kind of think maybe this is a cooperative deal. And uh, if that's the way you're going to do business, that's fine with us. That's just the way to put it. Unless you guys got a shittier way to put it. <laughs> I have, so you probably wouldn't get you right that way. <laughs> um, <clears throat> do you want me to request um, like a list of equipment used and what they did, or does that even matter at this point? You know, if they, if they won't back off, we're stuck. So, what, what time of day was it? Oh. This is August, first part of August. Uh, August 17th, so. Uh, it, it was, I want to say about midday. But yeah, I was going to suggest Larry was there. Because he was real proud of showing off that Hundred and fifty thousand dollar pumper we got. Well, that was a Friday. August seventeenth was a Friday. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe he'd run up if he gets the chance and talk to us. Um, not proud of? Yes. Yeah. So, what do you want to do on the shower deal? Well. And, and Stacy and Dee Dee and I uh, and the plumber have talked about uh, limiting the showers, uh, which we can do to a degree, with the exception that uh, it would take one individual, one of my people, detention, basically standing guard over that to get something done. Uh, plus, the turnoff is uh, we would have to uh, tear the wall out again uh, to be able to access the turnoff. Well, are, they, are these dip, they're different prisoners? So you. Well, no, the, on this one occasion, all the prisoners are the same. Right. Well, but, but we, we talked you about. You keep them in jail that long, do you? Well, we try <laughs> not to. <laughs> uh, but uh, we did talk to the uh, inmates that were there, uh, especially in the, on, on the, the uh, max cell. And my lieutenant said that two of them, he says, I'm, I'm pretty confident that they're telling me the truth. He says, they didn't do anything to warrant the flooding. So uh, <coughs> my thought was on the uh, shower, uh, turn them on and off, uh, that's okay for a very short period of time. 
we still need to fix what the underlying problem is. So, uh, and we might have to uh, uh, do some flooding our, of our own to isolate and locate and see what is going on, especially with both of them. Because like I said, the only common thing between the two cell blocks is the shower stall. And I would welcome all of you gentlemen to come up afterwards. Uh, we'll get the inmates out and we'll take a look at you so you can see and uh, see what, what I'm talking about. So, and then the other thing would be to build a cap to go over the middle. Build a cap over it. I'd do that yep. anyway. Yeah. Do that and, and, uh, and see where we're at. Yeah. There's not a chance of a cracked or plugged drain or something. I don't know. Well, the plumber hasn't been up there, has he? Oh, yeah. He's been up there. Okay. Yeah. He refused to come out the la uh, come up the last time. He says, I don't know what else to do. I'm, I'm fed up with basically what he said, which doesn't help me at all, or us. <laughs> so, but he is extremely frustrated, uh, so. Frustrated when you get me by the hour, or just frustrated, couldn't do that? Well, <laughs> I'll leave that up to you. <laughs> I know I'm frustrated. <laughs> And I, I know Dee Dee and Stacy well, are frustrated. It's, it's something that he's not seeing because if it's something to do with plumbing, I can guarantee you he'd figure it out. Oh, yeah. So yeah. we know that. Yeah. And it might be such a thing as we might have to, uh, uh, for a week or two, move some of the inmates clear out to another facility while we take the time to check these things out without having to work around them. Yeah. So. Okay. Okay. When you're checking it like that, Dave, can you dye the water so you can tell which where it's coming from? I don't know. I know they do that in water systems and stuff like that. To yeah. Find the leak. <clears throat> I don't know. I know that uh, the prosecutor who has been in construction. Uh, the judge who uh, uh, had his own construction up for, for a while, we've all looked at this along with the plumber. And every time we think we have something going properly, it turns out, no, we don't. So uh, that's why more eyes we get, uh, the more thoughts we get, I think the better off we'll be. And, you know, you guys are the ultimate uh, uh, say on, on the jail, so. Uh, I'm asking you guys to come up and, and uh, take a look, see, and... I think you better make sure that the... You, you've probably got a shower problem, but you want to make sure that it's draining on the roof. Yeah. Yeah, and see... Uh, I went up there and cleaned that 